Okay, so our first problem will be, uh, let's see, let's try uh, 4 sevenths minus 1 sixth. So go ahead and write that on your board, and I want you to solve it. Now remember, you're going to need to use your multiple because you want to change this, these two fractions into a common denominator. And to do that, you need your multiples. So you got to change these first so they have the same denominator, so they are like fractions, and then once they're like fractions, you can then actually subtract. But until then, we're stuck with figuring it out. So, okay, Marco, let's go. Get this problem written down. So count by sevens, count by sixers. Yep, you're doing it right. Keep on going until you find a common denominator. Okay, we'll talk about it. into that denominator. Yep, it'll take a little bit of work. Got it? Good, perfect. So we're looking for it. Okay, we're going to pull it from the board too. Is it six, twelve, eighteen? Which one are you going to pull from? You guys can count my six. You are on the right track, so it's looking good. Okay, I'm going to go and start this one. If you're still working, keep on working or, you know, we'll, we'll get there. But I see a lot of answers, so I think we're ready to move forward. So the first thing I got to do, and everybody did this, so I'm happy to see this. Everybody went to the multiples of seven and six, which is exactly what you should do. You need to count by sevens and sixes. So I saw everybody do this. That's the first step. So everybody knows the first step when it comes to subtracting unlike fractions. So I gotta count by sevens. Seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42. Then I'm gonna count by sixes. Six, 12, 18, 
24, 30, 36, 42. So sometimes it's hard to see when to stop. Sometimes you just gotta keep going until you find something that matches and it and it'll go farther than you expected. So I saw some of you, you kind of stopped at like 20 and then you did your sixes and you realized that oh, they still aren't matching and then you kept on going. That's perfectly fine, that's normal. That's totally fine. I don't expect you to just immediately get it. Sometimes it's gonna take a little bit of time if you keep skip counting, right? You keep counting by sevens and sixes until you find the answer that you're looking for. So 42 is the first common denominator. That's the very first one they have. So I'm going to take both of them into 42. So I'm going to use the arrows, the format that the book uses. So I'm going to take and I'm going to write four sevenths right here, put an equal sign. I know I want to change my denominator to 42. And then I'm going to use the arrows to figure out how I'm going to do that. So from jumping from 7 to 42, I got to multiply by what? What do I multiply by? London? 7 times 2 is 42? No. Reckon? Yeah, 7 times 6 is 42. So I'm going to put times 6 right here. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I multiply by 6 up here. What's 4 times 6? Lila? Yeah, 24. So I got 24, 40 seconds. That's the first one. I gotta do one six as well. So I'm gonna put one six here, equal sign. I know I wanna change it to 40 seconds, so I'm gonna put that right there. So this is what it looks like. I don't know what my numerator is yet. That's the only thing I really don't know. So how do I go from six to 42? I gotta multiply by what, Wesley? Yeah, multiply by seven. Then I gotta do the same thing to the top, so it's one times seven. One times seven is seven. So these are my new fractions. They are now like, they are now alike. 24, 40 seconds, minus seven, 40 seconds. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna rewrite my equation. And then I subtract. And I will only subtract the numerators. I do not subtract the denominators. The denominator tells me how big the pieces are or how many pieces I need to make a whole. So when I'm adding and subtracting fractions, I don't change the denominator. It stays the same. So it stays 40 seconds. So 24 minus 7 is 17. And I got 17 40 seconds. Can I reduce this? Can I make this a simplest? Is this simplest form? Can I reduce this or no? What do you think? What do you think? Can I? Can this be reduced, Brecken? There we go. 17 is a prime number. That means if I think of the factors of 17, only one and 17 go, can be multiplied together to get me 17. I can't do two times eight, because two times eight is 16. And we're two times nine, that's 18. So none of those work. Can't use three, can't use four. Only one is 17. So that means 42 either has to be divided by one or 17. 42 can't be divided by 17. So this is my simplest form. It can't be reduced anymore. I can't divide and reduce this fraction down any more than it already is. So this is my answer, 17, 47. So if you got this answer, good job. Let's do another one. So erase your board. Okay, seven elevenths. Minus one half. Seven eleven? Mm. Yeah, seven eleven. Ooh, seven eleven, yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and get this one figured out. Using the strategies we learned yesterday. And not only the strategies we learned yesterday, but the strategies we've been learning the week before that, when we were adding fractions together. 
common answer popping up, so that must be the answer. Everybody's getting it wrong. Everybody's getting it wrong and we need to be worried. <laughs> uh, writing your answer right here, why don't you show your work and then write your answer to it? So like, you just time, you could do it like right here. Or you could do it right there. No, one, one time. No. This is, whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So this is also time. What is one time? Go ahead and go over this. You're going to count by twos. You're going to count by elevens. Now, some of you guys were counting by. You shouldn't erase your boards yet. Okay, leave your work on on your board. Some of you I saw are already erasing your board. Don't do that. You want to check your work against mine, even if you got the right answer. So, when you're counting by elevens, I saw some of you guys were going way up, like. 99, you know, 110, stuff like that. Uh, you're not going to count twos all the way up to that number, okay? You don't need to go that far. 11s, maybe go to 33 and stop there. Because when you start counting by twos, I'm sure you're going to find something, okay? So you don't need to go into the millions with 11s. You can stop. You don't have to go that far. So we're going to count by 11s. Start with 11, then it's 22. And it's 33. I probably don't have to go any further than this. If I wanted to, I could go to 44, because that's not too much more. But that's probably far enough. Now I'm going to count by twos. So I got two, four, six, eight, ten. So far I haven't found one in common. 
14, 16, 18, 20, 22. So I had to count by twos a lot more than I did 11, but that's because two is a much smaller number than 11 is. 22 is the first common number, okay? The first common denominator they're gonna have. So I wanna change both of these into 20 seconds. So I'm gonna write out a fraction here and I'm gonna change them. So 7 elevenths is gonna become 20 seconds. I'm gonna make the arrows. How do I get from 11 to 22, Marcos? Two. Yeah, multiply by two. So I'm gonna multiply by two up here. Seven times two is 14. So 7 elevenths becomes 14 20 seconds. All right, let's do one half. One half is also gonna become 20 seconds because we want those to be the same denominator. How do I get from two to 22? Daniel, let's try to sit up, bud. Two to 22, Lila. Yeah, multiply by 11. And then I'm gonna multiply by 11 up at the top. One times 11 is 11. So 11, 20 seconds. So now I'm gonna take these two new fractions. I rewrote the fractions. I'm gonna subtract. So up here, I'll find some room. It'll be 14 20 seconds minus 11 20 seconds. Now, I also noticed this. Order is important in subtraction, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is very important. Like, so I shouldn't see, I shouldn't see the half. The half became 11 20 seconds, right? I should not see 11 20 seconds right here and 14 20 seconds right here. When you change the fractions to become like, so that they have the same denominator, you don't all of a sudden just decide where you wanna put them. You gotta keep it consistent. So that means if 7 11 is the furthest left, then it, the 14 20 seconds, which is 7 11, should be the furthest left. If 1 half is right here, then when I change 1 half into 11 20 seconds, it needs to be right here. It can't be over here. It can't be where I want to put it. It's got to be where it should be, okay? They got to match up. Yes, London? Yep, you could do it that way. That's using a strategy. If you don't know it right away, you could just count, and that works too. Yep, that is a strategy. So let's finish out this problem. 14 minus 11 is what, Marcos? Three, but if you were to do 11 minus 14, that'd be negative. It would be negative. And we're not learning negative numbers in this class. So, uh, um, so it should be, plus negative three is a different answer than I, three. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Zero's a number, technically. So All right. So 22 would stay because we're adding and subtracting. So 3 20 seconds would be your answer. Can I reduce 3 20 seconds? No, I cannot. 3 is a prime number. That means only 1 and 3 are factors of 3. 1 times 3 is 3, right? So can 22 be divided by 3? Uh-uh. So because 22 can't be divided by 3, the only number they have in common is 1. And if you divide both of them by one, you just get 320 seconds. So 320 seconds is the simplest form. All right, we will stop there for the stuff that we learned yesterday. Keep your whiteboards handy because we are gonna be using them later on in the lesson. Today, we're gonna be looking at benchmarking and we're gonna be looking at um, subtracting mixed numbers. So we're taking the next step. So this is what page 143 looks like. I'm gonna be covering both of the learn sections and then we're going to use the whiteboard to practice some problems together before I let you guys go into the actual problems in the workbook, all right? So we're gonna look at estimating first. Wait, so what? We're on page 143. You don't need to do anything on them. We're just gonna cover the learn sections for right now, okay? 
Yes, you can do side notes. All right, so looking at the learn section, the first objective today is use benchmarks to estimate differences between fractions. So the, the problem they give us is estimate the difference between 8 ninths and 4 tenths. So I make a number line, which you guys are all familiar with, and I have 0, half, and 1. I put 8 ninths on my number line, and I ask the question, is 8 ninths closer to 0, half, or 1? What do you think? Where is 8 ninths at, uh, Emmett? 8 ninths is closer to 1. Closer to 1. So 8 ninths becomes the number 1. All right? What about 4 tenths? I make a number line. I put 4 tenths on my number line. Where is 4 tenths at? Is it closer to 0, half, or 1? Lila? Half. Half. So 4 tenths becomes a half. So then I rewrite. I rewrite my equation just like here. 8 ninths with an arrow becomes one whole, four tenths, arrow becomes one half. I carry the subtraction down, so this is my new number sentence, one minus a half equals a half. So my estimated answer for eight ninths minus four tenths is about one half. So when I solve eight ninths and four tenths, if my answer is close to a half, then I have a reasonable answer. Okay? Yes, Kate. Um, then you're going to need a charger. I got chargers right there. I have chargers right down here. Okay. So does everyone kind of understand estimating? This one should be pretty. We'll practice a couple problems with estimating, but I'm going to cover mixed numbers first. Okay? So going on to the next page. On page 144, they show us an example of subtracting mixed numbers without renaming. So our objective here is subtract mixed numbers without renaming. The story problem is Demi had two and three-fourths pies. She gave away one one-eighth pies. How many pies did she have left? So we first want to understand the problem. Can we not be drawing on the whiteboard, please? That has only so much marker ink in there, and I don't need it wasted on pictures, okay? Because then I have to go buy more marker later. So please do not be drawing on the whiteboard. So to understand, I have to bracket the question, because that asks me what I'm looking for, what my answer needs to be. I underline or highlight or circle the important information. So two and three fourths pies, one and one eighth pies, and then of course we have the word gave away, which hints that we're probably subtracting here. So I write my number sentence, two and three fourths minus one and one eighth. And what they did first was they subtracted the holes, two holes minus one holes equals one Whole, and then they subtract. Then they wanted to subtract three fourths from one eighth. They want to subtract the fractions now. Now you can see the fractions are not alike, so they had to change them. They found the first common denominator, which is eight. They changed three fourths into six eighths. They kept one eighth the same because it already is eight, and then they did six eighths minus one eighth, and that becomes five eighths. So then you have one whole and five eighths. Now, they didn't do it the way that I've showed you before, which is the stack strategy. And I'm going to show you the stack strategy right here. So you could have done this. And this might be more feel more organized for you guys. Now remember, this is without renaming. So remember, when I told you when we were adding, renaming is kind of like saying, uh, carry over, right? When we were adding, we kind of had to carry over. Just like how when you add normally, when you get to 10 or higher, you had to carry the one over. In fractions, you create a new whole piece, right? When you go into an improper fraction, you've got to carry it over, that whole piece. Now in subtraction, we're not going to do it today, but we, you can also borrow in fractions, okay? So just like when you are subtracting with normal numbers, 
you have to borrow sometimes and bring it over so that your number is high enough to take away. In fractions, you can do the same thing. So looking at this, you do the holes first. 2 minus 1 is 1. I've got to change my fractions to be the same denominator. They both are 8. 4 goes to 8, multiply by 2. 3 times 2 is 6. And then 1 8 stays the same. 6 minus 1 is 5. And then you have 8, 1 and 5 8, which is the same here. Okay? All right. So this is what it looks like to solve fractions and subtractions. Did we do anything different than when we were adding mixed numbers? Nothing changed. The only thing that changed was we took away instead of putting together. That is really the only difference. All the steps are the same. Nothing different. Now, when we get to actual renaming, that's going to be a little different, and I'll show you how to do that. But the rest of this, none of the steps are different. It's all the same. So should everybody be able to handle this? Yes, because we've been practicing for a while, so we should be able to handle this. All right, now, we don't need your iPads right this moment, so please get those closed and taken care of. We will go to the practice problem in a minute, but I would like us to practice together as a class some of these problems here. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to provide you with some equations here. Do we have to use benchmarks? We will practice that, yes. On, on the whiteboard? Yes. Yay. You will be able, you can handle it, you can handle it. All right, so we're gonna start with estimating first. <laughs> Micah. I'm gonna try. So take the pencil off there, please. Erase the stuff that's on the whiteboard. You can just copy this down. Okay, so we're estimating. I'd like you to estimate, let's go five sixths minus two fifths. So I want you to estimate those, and then I want you to give me an answer. I need, an, I need you to show your work too. Aww. You can't just write an answer. We're not solving. That means we're not trying to find the answer, the actual answer. We're estimating. So you're asking yourself, is this fraction closer to 0, half, or 1? Then change it. Is this fraction closer to 0, half, or 1? Then change it. And then do some quick math. Solving it, we're just estimating those. Where's your estimating answer? Where's that an estimating answer? Okay, we'll go ahead and cover this now. All right, so I'm going to ask myself, where's five six land on this number line? 
Who can land five six for me? Zoe? Yeah, sure. Come on up and show me where five six would be. Russell, if you want to use the mic. you to put those on a number line and then I need you to estimate. but show your estimated numbers as well, not just an answer. So what are you changing six eighths into? What are you changing one seventh into? Same thing. Show me what you're changing these fractions into. I need an answer now. So now you've got to show me the answer. So you put them on the number line. Now estimate those out. Tell me what your answer is. Okay, so that looks good. Okay, that looks good. All right. So let's look at six eighths first. Who would like to put six eighths on the number line? London, come on up. And then one seventh. Parker, if you can do one seventh. Okay. 
Okay, good. Now, that we have them placed down, I'm going to be changing these because you should have wrote a number sentence. And you should have showed me how you were changing each one into an estimated fraction. So 6 eighths is about what? What would it be, Micah? 6 eighths is about what? Hmm? Is it closer to 0, half, or 1? Closer to 1. So 6 eighths becomes 1. Then we have subtraction. 1 seventh becomes what, Lila? 0. It is closer to zero than it is to half. So change into zero. One minus zero is one. So my estimated answer is one whole. That means that if I did this, I should maybe get around one whole. Okay, let's do a mixed number problem now. Now this one's not going to have renaming. So that means there's gonna be there's nothing fancy going on here. It's very straightforward. So we're not estimating this time. We've covered estimation. Alright, I'm gonna show mine in a stacked form. You don't have to necessarily do stacked, but I will do it. I'll set it up this way. So three holes and two thirds minus one hole and a half. Go ahead and solve. Now remember, it's just like when you're adding mixed numbers together. <coughs> you start with the holes, you get those figured out first, then you focus down on the fractions, and you say, okay, these fractions are not alike, I gotta change their denominators, and then I can put them together. So I'm going to sure do that. All right, that looks pretty good. We'll go over it. Looks pretty good. All right, there's a hole. That's good. Now you got to change. There's something you want. Now we're going to change both of these. One is a number that both three and two count to. If you don't know, count by threes and twos until you find a number. Nope, we're not estimating, okay? We were doing it. We're just doing it the normal way now. Oh. Yeah, so show me what the actual answer would be. So let's look at this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the holes first. Three times three minus one is two. So I got two whole pieces. Now I can't change these yet. I can't subtract. I got to make sure that they're the same denominator. So I'm going to count by twos and threes until I find the first common denominator. Two, four, six, eight, three, six, nine. Six is the first number they both have in common. So I'm going to change them. I'm going to put an equal sign next to both of them. 
and I'm going to change them over. I know I want them to be a 6, so I'm going to have them both be a denominator of 6. I'm going to go from 2 to 6. 2 times 3 gets me 6, so whatever I do to the bottom, i got to do to the top. So 1 times 3 is 3. Two, 3 times 2 is 6. Then I do the same thing to the top. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 3 is 1, and my denominator remains 6. So 2 holes and 1 6 is your answer. Okay. 2 holes and 1 6. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to stop right here. Because I want to give you time to do workbook stuff. Yes, Mike. A way how to tell if this is right is so for the denominator for the 